And welcome to the 10 Plus Weather Impact Show. I'm meteorologist Erica Kalora. We have a lot to talk about today, and I'm going to break down all the details and the timing that you need to know for this severe weather event that's happening overnight into the early morning hours of Thursday. Here's what we're looking at with our weather impact alert days set for Wednesday and Thursday. Strong storms are going to be likely for some of us, severe storms for others, and that happens late this evening through the overnight period. Heavy rain, frequent lightning and thunder, damaging wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour for some of us, as well as hail and isolated tornadoes, all a factor in these storms tonight and into the early morning hours of Thursday. So make sure you have a way to get those warnings, especially before you go to bed tonight, because we are going to see that threat continue even well into the early morning hours of Thursday. Here's the outlook for today. You have that bullseye in that fuchsia color. That is where we have the high uh, risk for severe weather and then areas outside of it extend off into the Buckeye State where we have an enhanced risk and a slight risk. So basically a two out of five and a three out of five in terms of your severe weather scale. So it's getting up there where we do have the likelihood to see some strong to severe storms, more so in the orange color, including almost all of Franklin County and areas westward, areas to the east in yellow, have a lesser impact, but still the threat for some damaging wind gusts with this line that's moving through that could bring us some scattered severe thunderstorm warnings. Now that continues into the early morning hours of Thursday and then kind of shuts down as we head towards sun sunrise. But threats look like this. We are looking at the highest threat for damaging winds. Again, wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour are possible, especially as you head west of Columbus. Areas could also see some hail, some larger hail possible south and west of here, and then the flash flooding threat going to be possible late tonight and into the early morning hours of Thursday. That tornado risk is low, but it's not zero, so we're going to have to watch for some kinks in the lines just like we did a few days ago with our last severe weather uh, impact day. But we are going to continue to watch that threat kind of dwindle into early uh, Thursday morning. I want you to know the difference between a watch and a warning. A watch is, is basically to say, hey, we got the ingredients to make this severe thunderstorm or to make this tornado, but it's not quite there. Just a heads up to make you prepare for what could be. And a warning is where you need to take action. That is when that severe thunderstorm or that tornado is imminent or happening. So that's the difference between a watch or a warning. We may get some watches uh, happening later this evening ahead of this line, but just to give you a reference, a watch means kind of a heads up, a warning means take action. Here is what the action, the actions you should take during a tornado warning. Get to the lowest level of your home or building, uh, or if you don't have a basement, get to the the most interior room in your house on the first level. Stay away from windows and doors and outside walls. Also a good idea. Maybe maybe you're planning on sleeping in the basement tonight just to be on the safe side. You know, take the pillows, take the blankets, maybe take the kids helmets and a couple extra pairs of shoes just for some protection and added safety measures in case something were to happen. Something to keep in mind. Keep those phones charged. If you have a portable charger, you know, bring that with you as well and just be prepared for later tonight. I want to show you the impacts here for the storms that we're expecting late tonight and into the early morning hours of Thursday. And I've broken it down for you in terms of winds, hail, tornadoes and flash flooding. And then you have the time frame up at the top here. It goes from 8 o'clock tonight through the early morning hours of Thursday. Red means pretty much you have a, the greatest chance. Green means a very low chance. So for strong winds or damaging winds, we're looking at that threat to increase after 10 o'clock as this line of severe storms rolls through. That's really going to be around Columbus around midnight, 1, 2 a.m. And that's when I am expecting the heaviest of rain. Some embedded spin ups are possible and also some very damaging winds. Large hail going to also be a potential. Um, that's mainly between this evening or late this evening through about midnight or one o'clock with that line coming through. And then your tornado threat, kind of a medium threat to low threat throughout this entire evening into the early morning hours with that line coming through. Again, just like we saw a few days ago with our last severe weather event, you could get these little kinks in that strong line that comes through 
that are just going to pop up. Usually they're brief and smaller and weaker tornadoes, but still can pack a good punch of damage. And then flash flooding really transitions into a heightened impact after 11 or 12 o'clock tonight as we start to see that line roll through. And then that rain kind of lingers, especially south and east of Columbus. Let me show you what I'm talking about here on your hour by hour forecast. So we stay fairly quiet through much of the afternoon and early evening time frame. Here's five o'clock, maybe an isolated shower or storm possible, but it looks like the cells that models were predicting ahead of this main line aren't really there anymore, which is good news because those cells ahead of the main line were the main driver for stronger and bigger tornadoes. So that is good news. It looks like there's actually an increased risk through places like central and northern Indiana to see that ahead of the line. But here looks like a lesser impact, which is great news. However, this line that moves through after 10 o'clock tonight still going to pack a punch of those winds and boy were those winds strong last time. They are going to be very similar this time. Wind gust of 65, 70 miles per hour or even greater going to be possible with this line of severe weather. So by midnight, it is just to the north of Columbus. We're going to continue to watch these Boeing segments and we might have a couple tonight, but you could see these Boeing segments and that's where you're going to have those very strong winds, those damaging wind gusts that continues to push south and eastward into the early morning hours of Thursday. This is two o'clock in the morning and you could see even some kinks along these lines here where you have a little bit of some inflow where we could see a little bit of some spin up activity, some brief weaker tornadoes. So that's something that we'll have to watch out for throughout the overnight period by five o'clock Thursday morning. I think we're pretty much done with the severe weather threat. We got a little bit of light rain back through Columbus, the heaviest of weather basically pushing south and east of Logan, New Lexington and east of Zanesville by nine o'clock couple of lingering showers. We get a nice little lull, a break. I'm sure a lot of us will have a lot of cleanup to do during the day on Thursday and then by dinner time and into the evening hours, we're tracking more showers and storms, some of which could be potent well to the south of us. We are under a slight risk for some of us tomorrow for severe storms, but it will be very much lower compared to what will feature tonight into the early morning hours of Thursday. We are all under a flood watch from Wednesday evening through Sunday morning, we are looking at anywhere from three to six inches of rain between now through the day on Sunday. So yes, it's a multiple day thing. You got tonight's rain Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. So five day stretch where we have rounds of heavy rain that could cause some flooding could cause some ponding on the roadways. So make sure you're taking precautions for that as well. But look at these rain totals. This is just an estimate and this is a, a lesser estimate than the other global model. But this brings us three to six inches possible from Columbus down to Jackson, a little bit less on the outskirts here, but still that's a lot of rain over the next five days. I want to talk about that flooding because we are looking at the Scioto River at Piketon to be uh, cresting at over 24 feet. So that is going to be in that moderate flood stage. So Scioto, Camp Creek townships and Southern Pike County are going to be impacted there. That that is Saturday afternoon when it when it peaks. The Scioto River at Chillicothe going to crest at 16.3 feet Saturday afternoon. So that's just above minor flood stage. So Kellenberger Road near Yellow Bud is where we usually see some issues there, some higher water. And then the Scioto River at Circleville not getting to moderate flood stage, but almost there at 19.6 feet Saturday morning. So Mill and Canal Road, uh, State Route 762, the Big Darby Creek, those are these those areas we should um, expect some higher water and some flooding issues there as we head into this weekend. So lots to contend with over the next several days. Tomorrow's forecast looks like this. Temperatures are going to start off in the 60s. We start off mild. We get to about 70 in the afternoon. And we're tracking a few lingering showers in the morning and then the chance for additional showers and thunderstorms Thursday evening around dinner time and Thursday night. Temperatures will still be around 70 by Thursday afternoon. Friday, we still have waves of moisture, a little bit of rain in the morning and then more showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder late in the day. Highs near 64. Saturday, 
We get another round. Few showers during um, the morning. We continue to stay wet, it looks like, throughout a lot of the day on Saturday. It's going to be a soggy weekend, at least to start. Temperatures still make it into the mid 60s. And then Sunday, we're still tracking some rain, at least early in the day. Highs will be in those upper 50s. And then we'll slowly start to dry things out, but still be dealing with some high water, I'm sure, for some folks as we head into early next week, Monday and Tuesday. A mixture of sun and clouds with temperatures falling below average.